Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing well and welcome to another video brought to you by Lois Art. As always, my name is Emmanuel Okafo and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create an advanced necklace rig. Um, this technique that you'll be learning today is going to be useful for like more complex stuff like skirts, shirts that you hope to have a level of control and also have it just automatically follow your asset, um, follow the underlying asset. So let's um, let me give you a little demo. Uh, we can see this rig. I can move the shoulders, and it all follows nicely, um, which is something you could easily achieve in Blender. Um, if you don't want the extra control, you could easily just select your mesh, go into modifier, and use the surface to form. Um, it will just work. Uh, but you lose the extra control of kind of adjusting things if you need that. Um, so for example, let's say I want to adjust the this position now we can do that with just moving the points and everything still works um, so that's what we're creating today um, so let's get started I'll just go to a new scene okay so this is our base file this is a simple character rig uh, rigged with uh, Pupa my tool for rigging it's basically rigify um, so we want a necklace for this tutorial so for that let's add a simple curve I will add a simple circle curve and place it here you can skip ahead if you don't care about this part I'm just going to increase the depth and what's left now is just posing so I'm gonna set this to face project and now I can just project them onto the surface of the geometry. Um, a disclaimer, this video obviously will be a bit cumbersome for like absolute beginners. Um, if you have intermediate level of, or at least a mid level of understanding of Blender, this should be easy for you to follow. Um, okay, so we have this simple necklace I'm just going to optimize it slightly okay so I'm happy with this and I can go ahead and object convert mesh okay so we have this as a mesh and we'll be using this for our necklace okay so I'm just going to go ahead and organize my scene slightly I'll call this character and we'll call this necklace and with one C let's move this to its new collection okay now we can go ahead and hide this the character for now and we we'll work on creating our rig for this so we can go to shift s because it is selected and we we'll add a simple bone okay and we'll be using the snapping a lot so i'm going to switch this to volume and make sure you enable it so now we can snap it onto the volume of the necklace so our goal here is to just kind of make it align um, like a rope like a like chain like um, feeling I am going to go here and go to viewport set in front and also ch change it to wire I just prefer working that way okay and now we can just keep using E to extrude and at this point we can press F to fill it up okay so we have our first setup um, let's make sure it's set to the volume it's not perfect but it works uh, adding more points is okay um, it, it can still work it's just it's going to add uh, more work since we'll be adding multi uh, multiple constraints and uh, effects to make it work so if you can simplify it and still get a very good result you should go for it um, so that's why I'm using less bones here so I'm going to disable the snap okay so what we want to do next is select all of this and press E to extrude and we'll extrude it upwards like this and next we'll check and make sure we didn't extrude any double bones I'm just housekeeping okay seems we are good um, next you do alt P and clear parent so we want every single 
born to have no parent and just be a floating island okay and at this point let's kind of clean things up a bit uh, i'm going to select this i'm going to select all the bones we extruded and move them to a new collection so we have this collection here these are going to be called controller bones and these are the former bones basically um, the controller bones are what are going to we're going to use to drive the constraints we apply on the former bones I hope you're not getting intimidated yet just stay tuned it's worth it uh, okay so with the bo controller bone selected we want to go to this bone icon here and hold on alt um, to uncheck the form so it's going to um, apply that um, it's going to execute a def um, unchecking the deform for all the selected bones if you don't do it it's going to only do it for the last um, selected bone okay so once you have that uh, we are going to move on to the next step the next step is basically applying the first constraint um, so that constraint we are applying is stretch two, and the purpose of this is to create a rope like feeling for our asset here since it's like a necklace we want it to feel like a rope and typically this constraint is used for like face as where you want to have a nice connection make it feel very connected um, using the stretch to constraint will do that for you um, the setup is pretty simple you have a parent bone you have a um, stretch bone and then the constraint bone so typically the parent bone will be the bone at the tail end of each deformer bone so let's say we want to apply the stretch to constraint on this bone the parent bone would be this bone since it's at the tail and then this will be what will apply the constraint and it kind of carries on um, the same way so for this bone this will um, this will be the parent of this bone because it has its tail, tail end and this will con control the constraint okay uh, so let's set that up so we can go ahead quickly and select this and control P so like you remember we select this shift select this control P and this is because this is at the tail end so select this control P control P and control P we're almost done and I think this is the last one, Ctrl P, and let's just check and make sure this, okay. So what we have now, if we go into the pose mode is if we move this, you can see it's moving the tail end of the bone. Okay. And now this is going to be what is going to drive the constraint basically. Um, so a quick way to apply constraint in Blender is to use shortcut, um, though you could easily do it with um, going to selecting the bone, going to constraint tab, add the stretch to target is the armature, and you will search the particular bone. Um, so if you don't want to do that, um, there's a faster way. So you can select this, select the shift, and control shift C. You will have this menu, and we'll click on stretch to. Now, if we move this, you can see the effect we are getting. Okay, um, so let's apply um, that stretch to. Stretch to stretch to and stretch to. So make sure everything is working. And yeah, so we have that rope like effect. There are several ways you could get this particular effect. Um, one way is using the um, spline IK, um, but it's a bit cumbersome for some scenarios, but you could get away with achieving it with this particular um, effect um, with this particular method okay um, so we're good now we can go ahead and bind um, the bone so earlier you notice I selected the controller bones and disabled the deform and left this to have this deform checked and the reason for that is bones that don't have the form will not deform the object basically so if you apply um, the automatic weighting blender is going to ignore applying weights onto this bone or even if you apply it it's not going to have any influence 
um, on your asset okay so now we can select this you select this control P automatic weight and now we should have this working okay so we have our rope uh, but if we go to our character and we enable its trick if we move this we can see nothing is happening it's not following along so we want it to follow along um, how do we make it follow along so we need it to copy the location of the um, the points around here so we know that this amateur is deforming this object and we want to copy that particular weight group of this uh, the effects on the mesh here so <laughs> it sounds a bit tricky that's why i said this is not for absolute beginners uh but it's quite easy to achieve uh, we can achieve that with a copy location constraint and using a mesh as a capturing um tool to capture the weight and then use that to drive um so let's uh, i will show you how that works i'm gonna hide this for now and here we're going to add couple of cubes so in object mode we want to go to add cube okay so I'm going to scale this down and I'm going to also make this a wired object so this is what we have now um, I don't want the scene to be crowded so I'm going to um, rather than duplicate this cube I'm just going to go into edit mode and du duplicate it in edit mode so we can turn on volume and then enable the snap and we just place it so shift D okay so we have cubes matching the points of each of the controller bones basically so we'll use this to capture the weight of the character and apply it onto the shriek and basically that's how the effect works okay um, so let's do that uh, here we are going to use like kind of like a smart trick to keep note of certain um, effects because I want to apply a couple of um, vertex group um, I will show you the effect we get if we don't use vertex group I'm going to go ahead and select this bone copy location and select this cube okay since we have several cubes there's no way for us to like identify what particular cube do we want um, to affect a particular bone and the way to do that we can use vertex group to isolate that okay so let's count how many cubes we have so we have one two three four five six seven eight so we have eight cubes so we need eight vertex groups uh, also this we need a way to indicate that this is the starting point of our count and so we want this let's say we want our starting point to be this one two three um it's not not no technical advantage it's just more of a ease of life so i could achieve that quickly by selecting this and making it's a group and setting it to red so i know now that this is where the my my counting is gonna start so it's one two three four five six seven eight okay so we're good and I will create eight vertex group just the latest so we have one two and eight so inside edit mode we'll select this assign it to the first one select this assign it to the second one so basically you get the gist of it So just to make sure everything is a-okay so we will remove this so we have one two three four five six seven eight okay and now we can go ahead and now add our constraint and it should work as expected so copy cube location and one okay so you can know if we in edit mode if we move this we can see we have to end up turn on this if we move the cube in edit mode the bone follows so that's perfect mm. 
okay um, so we do the same thing for the rest of the bone copy location of the cube to copy location of the cube three four five six seven and the last one we have eight so we are all good now and we can move each of this point and the appropriate bone is going to move along with it okay so now it's time to make it follow the the selected rig so that's pretty easy uh, you just go select the cubes go into modifier data transfer the source is going to be this object okay and we want to check on vertex groups vertex group and generate data and we can go ahead and apply this and also add an amateur sets the rig to the shriek okay so important you set it to the shriek and once you do that voila you have it full following along so the last step i mean making an object follow along is pretty easy uh, but we want it to uh, basically um we want an extra level of control on top of it um so that's somewhat easy too um so let's do that so the next step now for to bring everything together is to select this and duplicate this and move this to another layer so this will be the bones um that will we will let this deform the surface while we use this one as the control the top level control where we can move it around and adjust things okay um so we want this to be parented to this and the reason for that is because um like i showed you this bones are what moves this okay and we also want to remove all of this constraint because it's it served no purpose since we'll be using this other bone layer to achieve this I, it's really confusing i think the safer the safest bet is just follow what i'm doing okay um so this layer that con actually controls the curve um we'll go ahead and delete all the constraint so we'll go to uh, a quick way to remove all the constraint is to go to pose or we could just search for bake actions okay so we make sure you have only selected bones and we click on clear constraint set this to one okay so it has removed all the constraints okay and next we want to parent this onto all these controllers that actually has the constraint okay and to make that easy for us because currently we if we have them together it's quite confusing so we can switch this to a b bone and here if you hold on control alt s you can scale it down so we'll scale this down since they are the children and for this we can scale this down just enough so we enable the two layers so we'll select the skinny bone and select the chubby bone the <laughs> puffy bone and keep offset so we'll parent them keep offset keep offset um, if you have any question and need um, more explanation you can just let me know in the comment um, so we are done now okay so we're done so we can move this 
and we should also have it follow the character so let's test it out when it the character and let's try to move it so it works it moves to the character okay and we can still move this around so we can hide this hide collections we don't need so we only need this collection and we can also hide the cube just to make things look nice I'm going to create a custom shape Ctrl I and copy bone shape okay so this is what we have now we have our rig where everything follows along and you still have the ability to adjust as needed okay uh, so that's it uh, that's the tutorial I I hope it was helpful if you learn something please give this video a thumbs up if you wish to see more from me hit the subscribe button and yeah bye bye for now see you guys next time